Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a really cool trick that you can do with your miter saw. Now, I'm going to be using my DeWalt over there, but you can do this with any miter saw as long as it has a depth stop and it slides. Those are the only requirements to do what I'm about to show you. And it's curving a board to bend it. Now, you've seen us do this with circular saws in the past, table saws, but I want to show you how to do it also on the miter saw. But before we get started, I just want to say a quick thanks to 3-in-1 Oil for sponsoring this video, and let's get to it. So what I'm going to be curving is this 1x4 piece of MDF. This is 3 quarters inch thick, and it's 3 and a half inches wide, and I cut a 4 foot length of it. Now we're always going to default to MDF when we're going to do our curving process. If we need to get some kind of eyebrow arch or a curve for a, a base molding, MDF has already got some flex to it, so you're already starting with that advantage. I'll show you just by pushing this on the ground and pushing against it. You can already see there's some flex in that. The most important part about this whole process is setting up the depth of the cut. Now the rule I use is half by half half and half really so it'd be half the depth of the the material that you're using so if we're using three quarter inch mdf we're just going to make a line at three eighths and i'll do that right now and this is going to be a key line to set up the depth of our blade so i'll just take my tape measure and then i'll mark three eighths of an inch and once i mark that i'm just going to use my line up my pencil and then use my finger as a fence across the whole across the whole uh, board right there. Now that I have that mark, that's gonna indicate to me how, how I need to set the depth on this blade. And this is, you know, a lot of people don't know that their saw has this, but this is a depth stop for a miter saw. So there's this little tab right here. It's usually flipped back. If you flip that towards you, it's gonna come down. And what that's gonna do is gonna encounter this screw right here, this bolt. And it's gonna, when you push the saw down to cut something, it's gonna stop the blade from going all the way through your material, however much you set it. So you can see right there, it encounters that, that bolt and then it stops the blade. So I'll show you what that looks like from the blade standpoint. So this is my piece, there's my line. And when I bring the blade down, you can see I'm bringing that blade down as far as I can. And it, this, this is actually almost set up perfect, probably from the last time we did it. But if you want to adjust that, I'll go ahead and adjust it just to show you. Now to make any adjustments on this, you're gonna see there's a wing nut and you'll just loosen that first and then the screw will move freely. And if you wanna get a deeper cut into the material, you'll, you'll turn the screw clockwise and then tighten it down once you've got it set up. And what that does is it makes the spacing between the screw and the stop, it makes the, a, a wider gap there, giving you more spacing, allowing the blade to cut deeper. And if you want the opposite, the blade not to cut as deep, you're gonna um, you know, release the wing nut, um, untighten it, and then turn the, the screw counterclockwise, making the space between the screw and the stop closer, and it's gonna stop the blade sooner. So it's super basic on how to adjust this. So I'll cut, I'll make some minor adjustments and get this thing exactly where I need it. And then I'll show you the next part of this process. And really with this stuff, it's really micro adjustments just to get it where you, where you need it to be. So just take the time and make the adjustments. And once you got it where you need, need it, tighten that wing nut down a little bit less. All right, so I'm gonna call that good right there. That's, that's pretty good. So. With that, I'll go ahead and tighten the wing nut. So after we mark half of the depth of our material and we have our saw set up, the next half, when I said half and half earlier, is gonna to be to mark every half inch on this board. So I'm simply gonna take my tape measure, start at one end and just mark a little indication mark where I need to make the kerf on the board. So we'll go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and you, you get the picture. We're gonna make little marks every half inch so I know where to place the blade when I go to cut this board. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. 
and you can experiment with things but what i found is that every half inch usually works for us i mean you could try a quarter inch if you have like a really really tight bend that you're trying to get into or a really really curved arch but for us every half inch has never let us down you could go the other direction every three quarters every inch but we've tried that and it's just not enough give this is kind of the sweet spot right here every half inch and you can see i have all this board marked at every half inch i have the blade set to cut halfway through the material i got it set at that depth and the reason you need a sliding miter saw is because if you watch right here when i push this blade down the depth of that cut is not reaching the entire board it's only going to cut the center and i'll go ahead and make one cut and show you what i'm talking about we're all the way through there but back here we didn't even we didn't even cut through the side and to get this board to flex we need to do that. So what we need to do is bring in a spacer block to pull that board away from the back of the fence of the saw. And now you can see, if you focus on that line right there, you can see the, the depth of the cut will go all the way through the entire board. So I'm simply just using a one by two spacer back here, pulling the material away from the fence of the saw, allowing us to get that full uh, that full cross cut on this one by four now with all this dust flying everywhere with everything you guys know i use my vacuum with the pedal right here if you've been watching this channel this is a lot of dust flying i need this thing to be sliding smoothly so what i'm going to do is just lubricate those rails with the three-in-one oil this is the three-in-one dry to touch lube this one's great reduces friction and wear resists grit and protects resist grit is important like i said we got all that dust flying around everywhere and this thing could really get caked up especially using mdf and depending on how much you're cutting obviously we're just doing an example piece for you right here but depending on like the other day we did a, a board we had to make 230 cuts so that's a lot of sliding, that's a lot of dust flying around, and obviously the tools need to be taken care of. So now that I got that, everything's ready to go. I just gotta make these cuts. Now the technique that I use I just keep the motor on the saw running and I just slide it with my hand. I think if you kind of like take it every cut, you know, start the saw, start the saw, you're going to put stress on the motor. If you just keep that blade moving and just slide it with your hand, line up the blade with the shadow, you're good to go. All right, our last cut right here. All right, so there's our board, our kerf board, every half inch, half the depth of this three quarter inch piece of one by four MDF, and it should flex. Now with this spacing, it doesn't have to be exactly every half inch. You know, obviously there's some human error in there where I'm not a robot and I'm cutting it every half inch, like right on the money, but it's not really, doesn't have to be super precise in that respect. Now, if you have like one cut that's like, half inch, half inch, half inch, and then one that goes to quarter. The only problem with that is the board is gonna become very weak right there. It's gonna be the weak, weak link in the chain, as it were. So try your best to keep them spaced out evenly and you should be good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this backer board. You can see that's all cut up from just being a, a sacrificial piece right there. So we got our board curved. I'm gonna cut a four foot piece from just this piece of MDF right here. It's gonna be the same exact length as the board we just curved. So 48 inches, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna move my depth stop so I can cut all the way through this board. So 
So here we go, we got our stock board and then our kerf board. And again, show you that stock board first. It already has some give to it, being that it's MDF. But now with our kerf board, you can see, I mean, just how much easier. I have one finger and I'm just pushing it in the center here. And I got a nice eyebrow arch right there. So I could take this, depending on you know how steep the arch is, and I could bend it whichever way I want. I could bend it this way, or I can bend it this way. It's gonna flex pretty much whatever way I need it to. So it'll go with the, with the finished side bending concave or convex. So it really, either way it'll bend. And it looks kind of funny and wobbly, but <laughs> that's kind of what you're after. You're after that flexible board. And the way they're building these houses with this architectural drywall that curves and has arches, we use this a lot. So hopefully you find this video useful and learn something from it. I think we should end it with me trying to push the limits of this board here. So let's see exactly how far I can bend it. Here we go. I'll just hold it. And usually they'll break in the middle. Here we go. Yep, about right, in, about right in half is where they usually break. So, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Thanks again to 3-in-1 100% Dry to Touch Dry Lube for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about their products for tool maintenance and operation, check them out at the link in the description below. Take care.